So when it comes to life, sometimes you need to do everything that is possible and then just let God take over what you can't. Today we're going to be talking about, well, I, I guess we can basically riddle it down to what people or why people don't have confidence in what they're doing or, or starting something and, and maybe just patience along those lines and even laziness we can kind of... Uh, incorporate into this. It's basically because what we need to do in life is give everything that we got so that God can do what we can't. And a lot of people tend to stop or give up or, you know, not believe in themselves because, well, they only believe in themselves. They don't believe in God and God can make anything possible. That's the key to this message today is that God can make anything possible. So what you need to do is do everything in your ability, do everything that you are able to do, and then allow God to do the impossible. For whatever dream or something that you have going on, you need to allow yourself to believe that God can do anything. So if you just give everything that you got, God is eventually going to take over. But a lot of us, what we end up doing in our life we don't trust God. We don't trust that he has the best interest for us and that in certain points of our lives, there are certain reasons that we couldn't possibly understand on why we're doing certain things or why things aren't going the certain way. And especially in this day and age, because most of us want to make really quick money. We don't want to have the patience to suffer through things for a while. But you know, the thing is, the reason the key in, you know, it's not to maintain a life of suffering because you need to have enjoyment in life. But sometimes we have to understand that this is kind of the way that you grow in life is by suffering through things. And by understanding suffering, you can then appreciate things. You know, a lot of us don't tend to appreciate anything in our lives anymore. That's why a lot of us are depressed because we don't appreciate what we already have and how much more that we have from certain things. But what we also don't understand is that we don't trust God enough that if we give everything we got, even when we think or we look like we don't have what we have to have. I don't know if that makes any sense. We don't have what it takes to get to where we need to go. If God has given this to you, if God has put this in your head, well, this is something that he believes that will happen and you need to keep pushing for it. So a lot of us tend to give up on things or even not even start things because we don't trust that it's going to happen. And again, like I said from the beginning, the reason that we don't trust that it's going to happen is honestly because we don't believe fully in God's promise. We only believe in ourselves. And the problem with that is that we are limited as human beings. We don't, we, we, we cannot have limitless possibilities because we are human, but God isn't. God can do anything. So if you believe in him, then he will pull you through. Even if it doesn't look like what you would think it would look like. We're going to go into the Bible basically first story that I think is very important in most people's lives and it's going to be basically the walls of Jericho and how essentially Joshua kind of had a weird thing that he had to do that God asked him to do but in the end it ended up working out the way that you know it, the way that we thought it was going to happen but not in the way that we thought it was going to happen so we're going to go to Joshua chapter 6 and it's going to be the destruction of Jericho. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. The Lord said to Joshua, see I've given Jericho into your hand. It is its king and the mighty men of value. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. So it came to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great sound, and the wall of the city will fall down flat. And the people shall go up, every man straight before him. Then Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said to them, Take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Proceed and march around the city and let him who is armed advance before the ark of the Lord. So it was when Joshua had spoken to the people and the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord advanced and blew the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. 
The armed men went before the priest who blew the trumpets, and the rear guard came after the ark while the priest continued blowing the trumpets. Now Joshua had completely, you guys are my troops on the ground, so make sure you hit that like and subscribe and share this content because it helps spread the word of God to as many people that need it. Now back to the video. He commanded the people saying, you shall now shout or make any noises with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, shout, and then you shall shout. So he had the ark of the Lord circle the city, going around it once, and then they came to the camp and lodged in the camp. Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. Then seven priests bearing seven trumpets, ram's horns, before the ark of the Lord, went on continually, blew the trumpets, and the armed men went before them. But the rear guard came after the ark of the Lord, while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. The second day they had marched around the city once and returned to the camp. So they did six days. Six days. This is very important because at this point, I think this is very relatable to a lot of our lives. You know, we're doing something and it seems like, why am I doing this? You know, what is the point of this? You know, Joshua walking around the city six different times, he, he just like us is going, what am I doing this for, Lord? Why am I doing this? But there's a purpose to everything and there's a reason for everything, even if it's just to allow you to learn patience and allow you to trust in the Lord. Sometimes the Lord works in mysterious ways and we don't fully understand the things that he's doing, but he does. And sometimes you have to understand that when you are thinking of your life and that sometimes you're not going to understand what you're doing or why you're doing it, but just keep taking steps forward. Stop being so smart in your mind and just keep taking steps forward. But it came to the pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. On that day, only they marched around the city seven times. And the seventh time it happened when the priests blew the trumpets and Joshua said to the people, shout for the Lord has given you the city. Now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction and it and all who are in it. Only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all who are with her in the house because she hid the messengers that we sent. And you by all means abstain from the accursed things lest you become accursed when you take of the accursed things and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble in it. But all the silver and gold and bronze and iron consecrated to the Lord shall come to the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpets, and it happened. The people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up in the city, and every man straight before him, and they took the city. So this is a very important uh, part of the Bible in understanding that, you know, we don't fully understand sometimes where God is taking us or why God is taking us a certain way, but we do understand that God does the impossible and God does it whatever which way that he wants. Sometimes a lot of us tend to do things in a way of not just doing them. You know, we, we tend to think and do be smarter than we need to be sometimes. And this is not like an insult. It's just a mere fact of sometimes you just simply need to keep taking steps. And honestly, if you look at Joshua, that's basically the story of it is just continue taking steps, continue walking forward. Some of us want the walk forward that each step, you step on a golden brick that explodes and, and you know, it showers you with sunshine and flowers and all that stuff. But sometimes you're just taking a step. You know, sometimes you're just continually stepping forward, walking forward every single day until the walls fall. And a lot of us tend to, because we watch TikToks and we watch a lot of the things that make us think that these things are just easy and that they just happen overnight. Yes, there are certain people that it happens overnight, but those people usually turn crazy because they never built any sort of anything. They just kind of got something. So what you have to understand is that when you're approaching something in life, you need to realize that sometimes you're just taking steps. You're just taking steps towards what God has promised you, towards what God is showing you. And it's not that every step needs to be riddled with 14,000 answers and just every single bit of everything, but it's just a step. It's a step forward. It's a step forward and not a step back. And that's kind of how life goes. You know, sometimes in life, you're just taking steps forward and that you get in your head where you tend to think that you want to have everything right now, but it might not be the best plan for you. You know, like for instance, the harlot that would eventually have the bloodline for David, you know, 
if they just took the city, she might have been killed. And most likely she would have because they wouldn't have been told by the Lord to stop. So this is kind of like a, a connection to your life is that the important thing in that city was the one singular person that was saving people. She was going to be the bloodline of David. So if they just took the city, if they just had God explode the walls and just took the city, she might have been killed in the crossfire and the whole entire bloodline would have been destroyed. So take that into account with your life. Is that sometimes if you just storm the metaphorical city in your life, you might not have the actual miracle that's going to happen if you just waited a second longer. So if you want to be that dude that just wants to get everything right now, but is going to miss out on everything that would be good in his life because he got anything too quickly, but doesn't want to realize that and wants to keep trying to storm that city when God hasn't told him it's ready yet, we'll turn this video off. But if you want to be that dude that understands that sometimes you need patience and sometimes you just need to take steps as many times that God tells you until he finally allows the walls to fall and your life changes, but he's going to do it in a way that will allow your life to be the best possible outcome. Instead of something that you see, it's something that he sees and you want to trust God so you can have that life continued. We'll keep watching. Smells like hard work and determination, boys. Hit that like and subscribe if you like this video and watch this video right here if you want to understand why you have pain in your life and how God will use that pain as your purpose. Uh, we're going to be starting to do memberships again. And this is going to be, it's basically four bucks and it'll just be the extra videos every Saturday. You'll get extra videos on Saturdays. If you join the membership, it's four bucks a month. I tried to make it as cheap as I possibly could you'll get an extra video. So why everybody gets five members will get six every single week. So we'll be doing that. And then again, going to be starting a clothing line. Uh, so I will let you guys know when I'm dropping that, but just going to be first starting off with t-shirts and then eventually we'll grow to whatever else, but just starting a, you know, a godly type of t-shirt line that we can just rock and let everybody know our lord and savior is who we represent so as always guys praise god love god he's great all the time jesus christ is lord have patience and let god do the impossible love you all peace